Welcome back to Overthinking Tech. In this video, I'm going to show you how to set up Logitech Media Server. Now, there's two methods on how to do this. The first is to use the built-in Logitech Media Server installer inside of PyCore Player. Now, if you don't have PyCore Player set up, be sure to check out my link down in the video description. You're going to need it eventually if you're following along with this series. The second method is to set up Logitech Media Server inside of a Linux distro. So I'm going to show you how to set it up in Ubuntu Server, but the setup will apply to any Debian-based Linux distribution, uh, including Ubuntu, Ubuntu Server, Linux Mint, uh, etc. This method is a little bit more involved, but it has one very significant advantage, uh, which is why I actually ended up implementing and figuring out that this method is better. And I'm going to cover what that advantage is towards the end of the video. So stay tuned. Now, I've already got my PyCore player set up and running. Again, check the link in the video description if you need help with that. And I have the IP address. And if I enter this into a web browser, I should be greeted by the PyCore player page. Now, we have this LMS button. This is Logitech Media Server. There's an integration for it built into PyCore player. But by default, it's not running. The reason it isn't running is when you're setting up your home audio, you'll have, chances are, multiple devices running PyCore Player. These can be Raspberry Pis, the standard full-size ones, or Raspberry Pi Zero Ws, uh, which, again, check the video description. I will have a video up on that soon, uh, so keep an eye on that playlist. But you're only ever going to have one Logitech Media Server running, and it's going to control all of the devices running PyCore Player. So by default, this is off. And the first thing we're going to want to do here is just hit install. We're going to get a warning about there not being enough space. Click OK. That will automatically redirect you to this resize partition table. For this, I recommend going with the 2 gigabyte option. Micro SD cards are very large now. There's no reason to do the whole SD card. And if you want to use the whole SD card, you're better off partitioning that separately but that's going to be a later sort of tips and tweaks video. For this, we're just going to go 2,000 megabytes or 2 gigabytes and resize. Now, you will have to wait for this to finish. Once it's done, it should automatically bounce you back to the home page. That time limit should be enough for the resize to finish. Uh, if not, give it a couple more minutes and click refresh. Then you can come back to the Logitech Media Server page. There is a warning here. This is important. You can mess up your Logitech media server if it loses power or shuts off improperly. Something to keep in mind. We should be ready to hit install LMS. And this process should be entirely automatic. If you're having an issue where installing LMS fails for some reason, try a reboot after doing the resize. That I had an issue where it just wasn't downloading, and that resolved it for me. Once you've done that, you should just need to click that Install LMS button. You should see that everything worked successfully. And then you can come down here and click, well, Auto Start is already set to Yes, so we can just hit Start LMS. It should just take a second, and then we should get starting, and you'll see Slim Server running PID, and then some number here. Yours will almost definitely not be the same as mine and we'll see that green check mark. At this point, we're ready to access our Logitech media server. And we can do that by going to the same IP address, but simply putting a port 9000 at the end of it. Now that we can get to our Logitech media server, we're presented with a choice. We can set up an account, or we can come down here and click the skip button. Now, generally, I'm not for accounts. However, there is an advantage to it in this case. If we come to Logitech Squeeze Box, and you'll have your Create an Account button right here, if we look at the app gallery, these apps here will automatically install if we have an account set up. So for my case, Title, it says, please log in to install this app. If I create an account and log in with my Logitech Media Server, this will install with 
one click. We don't have to use the apps that are part of Logitech's squeeze box. There's another way to set up apps, but it's something to consider that if you are interested in using any of these 25 apps that are here, I would recommend making an account because it just makes things easier. For the moment, however, I'm going to be clicking skip. At this stage, it asks us to select a music folder. Now, currently, I don't have any music on the device, so let's fix that. If Logitech Media Server is running on PyCore Player, we can come back to our main PyCore Player page, head over to LMS, and then here you have two main options. One option is you can set up a USB disk. Alternatively, you can set up a network share, and that's what I'm going to show you how to do. I will then show you how to do this same thing uh, running Logitech Media Server and Ubuntu Server. Now, the first thing we're going to need to do is come up here to the install and enable additional file systems. Once again, this should just be a one click install button. Now, for some reason, my PyCore player had an issue where some of these failed. So I'm going to do a reboot because I haven't done that since I set up Logitech Media Server. And then we'll try this again. So now is a good time to look at how to reboot the device. Uh, if you just head to the main page, you'll have a reboot button. Once the device has rebooted and you're back on the main page, I'm going to come back to LMS uh, and I'm actually going to hit the remove button to remove the file systems, do another reboot, and then retry the installation. Coming back into the LMS section, I'm now just going to reattempt, although for some reason I've switched to beta. Uh, there's a few different setting options that you can select from the very bottom here. I just want to be on the main one. Uh, I'm now going to attempt to reinstall these and see if it works this time. Okay, there we go. No fails. I am now going to go ahead and do one more reboot just to make sure all of that takes effect before I set up anything else. Once the device has rebooted, we can now come to the Logitech Media Server section where, once again, I'm on that beta one. I'm going to select the non-beta one. We should now be able to interact and set up a network share. So to add a network mount, uh, we're going to come down here. We're going to hit enable. Under mount, we're just going to pick where on the, uh, in this case, Raspberry Pi, we want this mount to be. So I'm just going to do mount music. And then we're going to do the IP address. Uh, now I'm using Unraid for this. So it'll just be the IP address of my Unraid server. If you have a different uh, NAS appliance or a true NAS server, it'll be whatever that IP address is. Share name will be the name of the share we want this to be able to access. And then you will want to set up a username or password. You did just see my password there, but this is a temporary password. Don't worry, I won't keep that. Uh, and then we should just be able to hit set net mount. If everything goes correctly, we'll get the successful. This should finish in about a second. When we hit go back, we'll see that that is there. And now we should be able to access those files in Logitech Media Server. Uh, because I've rebooted the device, I'm just going to refresh this page, walk through again, hitting skip. And now under mount, we'll see that music folder. Uh, and I have a number of things in here selecting music and then playlist folder for this i'm actually just going to leave this set to home uh, this is where playlists get stored if you're concerned about these getting backed up then you can write them to your nas i'm not concerned about them getting backed up so i'll leave this on home uh, that doesn't actually write the music to the playlist it's literally just a text file and then finish This should start finding music. So if we come to my music and go to music folder, we'll see folders in here that contain all of the music. Uh, it's nowhere near Christmas time, but let's use that as an example. Inside that, I'll just end up with a whole bunch of terribly sorted Christmas music. And you know what? I think this is still scanning. So when you first set it up, it can take a moment before things actually uh, finish scanning, especially if you have a large music library. So just something to keep in mind. 
Now, this is actually a good opportunity to show one of the major limitations of running this on a Raspberry Pi, and ultimately why I chose not to. If I come to my music folder here, and I try selecting something large, like say I want to play this entire music folder, and I just click the play button, You have to wait a moment. This is seemingly the problem I've run into. Okay, so this is the problem. The, the short version of why I ended up not leaving this on a Raspberry Pi is actually just that it, they aren't fast enough. Now, my Unraid server can easily say, sustain gigabit per second output. like easily i actually it's on a 10 gig connection all ssds for this folder it can go well past one gig of output but we're not seeing anywhere near a gigabit per second here we're looking at a fraction of that and whenever you tell it to go play something it has to read the files it also has to read them anytime it wants to do a general library scan and this ended up being really slow. The most noticeable time it was really slow is when I would be in Home Assistant and I would hit play on a playlist. It would take a really long time to propagate that playlist in, even for stuff that was just 100 or 200 songs. I tried this on Raspberry Pi 4, and it was markedly better than a Raspberry Pi 3. A Raspberry Pi 3 is markedly better than the Raspberry Pi 2 this is running on right now. So this is ultimately why I chose to put this on my Proxmox server, because a Ryzen 5700X runs circles around a Raspberry Pi trying to do this. So let's take a look at setting this up on a Raspberry or on a Proxmox server. Before switching to running this on Proxmox, however, there's one thing to note. We have this little drop down, once again, right behind. Oh, look, it finally finished playing a different music folder. Actually, I don't, I don't think that's done. I'm pretty sure there's more than 807 tracks in that folder. This is the problem. We have this little drop down here, and under it, we have Choose Player. Currently, the only thing that shows up is Pi Core Player. And it's this Pi Core player. It's the same Pi Core player that we just set up Logitech Media Server on. Now, if we set up Logitech Media Server on something else that is not this Pi Core player, this will still show up. All of the Pi Core players that are on our network will be immediately found by Logitech Media Server. Now, make sure you're only running one version of Logitech Media Server because things get really confused if you try doing multiple. But they'll all show up and they'll all be in a list. We'll also get this synchronize button once there, there's multiple here. Now I'm not gonna cover all the aspects of getting a VM or anything set up. I just wanted to touch on how much power you need in order to run Logitech Media Server. The answer is not very much. I'm gonna give this thing two cores and the default two gigs of RAM, and that is it. This will basically run on any mini PC, any VM, anything. So I'm not gonna walk you through a full setup of how to get Ubuntu server running, but everything I'm gonna show you how to do in the command line here is going to apply to any Debian installation. So if you're on Ubuntu, Ubuntu server, Linux Mint, this will work for all of them. Now, the very first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to do a sudo apt install net tools. Uh, this is just something that I like to have on a system because it makes getting the IP address of the system really easy. Uh, now that that's installed, I can run if config and there's my IP address. And the very next thing I'm going to do is open a PowerShell window here and SSH into it because I don't like not being able to copy and paste. The second thing we need to do 
is we need to go to the Logitech media server download page. Now I'll link to this down in the video description. We are going to select Debian and x86 if you're on an Intel or AMD CPU. And then we'll have this download button. I'm actually going to click this, but then I just need to come up here and I need to hit right click, copy download link. Now we're gonna take that link that we copied and we're gonna paste it into this line right here. But that line right there. The reason I am telling you to go and paste this link in here is just in the event that the version changes, you don't wanna be downloading an old version, you're gonna want whatever the newest version is. From here we can copy this, and of course these will be down in the video description, so copy and paste to your heart's content. We'll paste this in, and this will download the Debian file directly to our system here. So once we have the Logitech Media Server downloaded, uh, there's a couple of prerequisites we need. So we're going to start by running this command here. And this is going to give us an error message that things are broken. The solution to this is to do a, well, it's actually to do exactly what they recommend here. sudo apt, and then we'll run, I don't know why I'm typing this. This will find the missing dependencies and download them. Uh, there seems to be an issue where some dependencies are not included by default with Ubuntu server versions 20.04 and later. Or I think any Ubuntu-based or Debian-based distribution 20.04 or later. At the moment, this solution seems to fix it. Uh, at this stage, we should be able to run the command here to actually install Logitech Media Server. Uh, now, importantly, this is the version number for the version currently. Make sure that matches the file you downloaded. Running this, we should just get these four lines that say setting up, and we should be done. Uh, from here, we can begin adding music to this system. So once again, I'm going to show you how to add a network attached storage device for music, exactly the same way we did with Logitech Media Server but obviously we don't have the Pi Core interface to do it through. Uh, so the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna make a new directory that I want to hold the music in. Uh, I'm also gonna be doing this in mount-music. Again, sudo on that because you'll need it for the file permissions in the MNT folder. Uh, the next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do sudo nano. Yeah, I don't use Vim or VI, I am a nano person because I am basic. Oh, I said nano so much I have no idea what I'm typing. Etc. F stab. Let's not question any of those pronunciations. From here, we need to add a line that mounts the network storage device we want and puts it at the correct file location. Now to do this, I'm gonna be using this line right here, and there's a couple of things to make sure you fill out in it. So the first one, are we, we're gonna need those usernames and passwords for this network share. Once again, don't go showing people your password. This is just a temporary one. We will also need the IP address as well as the name of the network share. I've already entered those, so those are here on the left. And then you will also need the folder where you want the music to show up inside a Logitech media server. Again, I'm using that Mount Music folder I just created. We'll write that out, and then we should just need to run sudo mount all. And when we take a look inside of that music folder, we should now see everything that's on our NAS folder we just mounted. From here, we can make sure Logitech media server is running. It helps if you run the correct commands for this. Uh, we're gonna make sure this is active by running enable here. That will also make sure that Logitech Media Server starts when the system boots. We can check to make sure that it is running currently by using the system status command, and we should see that this is active and running. If yours is not showing as active and running, revisit. You need to do something differently because you need this to actually show us running. 
Uh, if you want to test rebooting and making sure it starts back up, you just reboot and then run the same status command again. Uh, at this point, we can now access Logitech Media Server at the IP address of our system. So in my case, that's going to be this guy right here, and then colon 9000 for port 9000. Uh, now, if you've watched the entire video, we've already gone through this. If not, you do have the option to sign in here. The advantage of creating an account and signing in is that the apps in the app gallery can be automatically installed through the web interface. You don't have to sign in, though. You can click skip down here in the bottom right, which is what I'm going to do right now. I then have my choice of local music folders. Uh, this looks very different than when we did this on the Pi Core player. Here, I'm just going to select mount, and then I'm going to select that music folder I created. Hit next for playlist folder. Uh, your playlist is just any time you make a playlist, it saves like a text document of what songs are in that. If you want that to be backed up, you can have it saved to the NAS. I'm just going to let that get saved into my home folder on here. Hit next and hit finish. Now, it can take a moment to find things, depending on how big the library is. But you should see stuff appear in your music folder. Uh, if I come down to music folder. Oh, and then actually, yeah, I didn't actually select the music one. But I am seeing files appear here, so the music is being found. If I come and I hit play on something like music, there's a couple things to note here. One of them is that the Pi Core player that is set up has already been found. So Logitech Media Server is going to find all of the Pi Core players that are on the same network as it. So that's already been found since there's only one here. That's what's going to run by default. If I click play on music, we should now be able to see. Yes, this is going to start reading. This is the big reason why I like having this on. Yeah, this right here. Uh, actually, in my case, really the big reason I like having this on my Proxmox server instead of on a Raspberry Pi. I showed with the Raspberry Pi that I was getting a fraction of the. Actually, there's the Raspberry Pi appearing right here. Uh, a fraction of this read speed, of this performance that I can get if I run this directly on my Proxmox server. This is largely because one, the Raspberry Pi is just a lot slower. And two, this actually has a 10 gig connection to the NAS. So that helps me break that gigabit barrier. And like that, we should be up and playing. This will be faster going forward, but something to note is the performance of your hardware is going to affect how well this works. The faster your hardware, the faster these playlists load in. And when we get to the stage of automating stuff inside of Home Assistant, if things take too long to process, Home Assistant can actually hang and encounter errors because it's not expecting things to take that long. So that was setting up Logitech Media Server. Uh, you can now use this to play music out of the Raspberry Pi, and you should be able to, at this stage, I would guess, figure out how to get the Raspberry Pi playing music if you play around a bit. But I will be covering more setup as well as control of devices in later videos. So make sure you subscribe and hit the like button and stay tuned for those.